Hi guys, it's Billy. Welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna go do diarrhea. <laughs> Sarah, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a quarterly wrap up. I've decided that for me it's just easiest to just do my wrap ups every three months to just talk about everything I've read in that time. Um, just because monthly is just too much for me to remember or put into my schedule. So yeah, let's talk about three months worth of reading. So today's format I've decided is going to be a little bit different. I saw Riley do something like this, but essentially what I'm going to be doing is like writing my own prompts and then answering them with books that fit that. So each prompt will get like one to three books. And so they're kind of like superlatives almost, like you'll, you'll see once we get into the topics, but yeah. So I guess I'm calling this prompt slash superlative style. Um, but yeah, let's just get into the wrap up. So the first category is surprising books. And by that I mean books that I was either surprised I liked them or surprised that I didn't like them. They just overall surprised me. So we're gonna start with the positive, and for that I'm gonna have to say House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. I actually just talked about this in the mid-year freakout tag, so I've probably already listed this as a surprising book. So you're probably like, if you watch all my content, you're like, Sarah, that's so repetitive. But whatever, whatever, it's fine. It surprised me, and I'm gonna let you know in two videos. Uh, but basically this is an urban fantasy by Sarah J Maas. It centers on a character who is half fae, half human, and at the very beginning of the book, someone gets murdered, and so the rest the book she's trying to solve the murder with this angel who's essentially like I don't know I guess he's like law enforcement I don't know he's kind of a cop but he's also like a slave to like an archangel I don't know it's a whole thing um the world building in this just phenomenal just amazing like chef's kiss like Sarah J Maas like what did you put in this book because I'm addicted I read this because I did a vlog where I read books that are from authors that I have not previously liked I had read one and a half books in the Akatar series and I had DNF Throne of Glass. So I wasn't really Sarah J Maas's uh, biggest fan and I was kind of on the outs uh, because everyone else loves her so much and I just, I just wasn't one of those people. So I went ahead and I read this for the video and this was a complete banger. Like I loved it so much, I bought a copy. I just, it's amazing, it's flawless. Like I just, I really enjoyed it so much. It was a huge surprise to me. I'm a little nervous to read the sequel because a lot of people have been saying it's not as good as this first book. And that's just kind of scary because these books are incredibly long. So if you aren't enjoying one, it's just gonna drag. But I'm really, really, really hoping that I like it. That I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'm one of the few that likes it. But then that leads us to the bad news, the negative um, of a book that surprised me that I actually didn't like. And that was The Push by Ashley Audrain. I actually also talked about this in the mid-year freakout tag, so if you've watched that, this might be a little repetitive. Um, but that book was not giving. I did not like it, like one star, genuinely. It is about a woman who is very happily married to her college sweetheart, and he really wants to have children, so she kind of relents and decides to have kids with him because she loves him so much. And when they have a daughter, she's just really not vibing with the daughter. She thinks the daughter is like kind of fucked up, like there's something wrong with her. And she repeatedly tells her husband this, but he he thinks she's just being like mean to their daughter and then eventually they have a son sorry i have like hair like dog hair on my lipstick eventually they have a son and she connects way more to the son and then the husband is upset with her because like she obviously likes the son more than the daughter oh my god this dog hair <laughs> it's a problem when you have one dog and two cats in a house you will get pet hair on your body at some point. And so the, basically the book is written through a letter to her husband because they have separated and that's pretty obvious at the very start of the book that something happened that led to the demise of their marriage over this child. I just really did not like this. Um, and I will maybe take some ownership of that because a fun fact about me is that I really don't like children and I don't want children. I don't not want to be a mother. Motherhood has never been something that I'm interested in. And so like, the exploration of motherhood just like wasn't interesting to me. No offense if you are a mother or you like have kids, I love that for you. Or if you want kids, like that's amazing. Like you are so strong, like you are honestly stronger than the Marines. Like amazing, flawless, like you're so selfless. Just, I did not enjoy reading the perspective of a woman that didn't want to have kids but had them for a man. And I didn't really find it to be much of a thriller because even though the daughter is kind of like freaky, there's not much of a twist. Like you go into the book thinking one thing and then it ends and then I'm like, Okay, that's what I thought. 
And I was reading all these Goodreads reviews of people being like, oh my god, the twist was amazing. What twist? Like, literally, what twist? The only thing I found interesting about it is that it's sort of an exploration of generational trauma because the woman comes from, like, a history of other women that don't want to be mothers and they're all forced to be mothers because of the patriarchy. And so like, that's interesting. And don't get me wrong, I can fully admit that Ashley Audrain is a talented writer and I would be interested in reading something else by her in the future if it's centered on a different topic or maybe the thriller just, like, had different vibes. I would probably like it. But overall, I just really, really, really did not like this. And I really felt like the odd man out because I was like, why does everyone love this? It's like critically acclaimed, like won awards that won the Goodreads Choice Awards. I'm pretty sure it's been written up like like in the bestseller list. And, and everybody's like, all the reviewers are like, it's amazing. It's amazing. The best debut thriller since sliced bread. And I'm just like, no, it's not actually. It actually made me angry how much I disliked it. And it was, it was a real bummer because I want to be like everyone else. I want to be like the other girlies that had a good time reading this. But I just, I really 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 did not like it so love that for me my next category is best couples i read a few romance books that i just like really liked the couples and so i thought that would be a good way to group these books the first of which is still beating by jennifer hartman this is a dark romance that centers on um a girl and her future brother-in-law like basically her, this guy's been dating her sister like since they were in high school and they're literally a month away from getting married but through a series of events they end up getting kidnapped together so the girl and the guy who normally hate each other they do not have a good history because again they've known each other since they were teenagers and even though he's been with her sister she just like has never really connected with him and he's always kind of like like pulled pranks on her and bullied her a little bit so she doesn't really like him but they end up in this horrible situation where this man kidnaps him and his whole mo is that he kidnaps people who are not romantically involved and like convinces them to fall in love and then murders them so he's like a serial killer and so it's extremely dark i would give a lot of trigger warnings for like sexual assault and kidnapping serial killers murder violence you know that whole shebang but a lot of the book actually takes place after they get rescued like after they get away and it's about how they went through this like crazy like bonding trauma experience but he's supposed to be engaged to her sister and so it's like how can they be so connected when he's supposed to be like with her sister and he's been with her sister for like i think it's like 15 years or something they've been together um and so it's kind of crazy and so their romance is just it's beautiful like it will make you cry like it's just there's something so special about it it really made me want to read more dark romance uh, because it just kind of felt like reading an episode of criminal minds that also happens to be romance and i really liked that i wouldn't say it's for everyone because there's some very graphic violent scenes in it and it may not be suited for everyone but for me I kind of fucked with it. I don't know what that says about me, but I really fucked with it and I thought the romance was beautiful and I just thought they were like a beautiful couple and I would really recommend it. And then the next couple that I really liked was um, Nora and Charlie from Book Lovers by Emily Henry. News to me, but recently I've been discovering that a lot of people don't like Emily Henry and that's weird because I love her. I'm obsessed with her. Um, I want to give her a big old kiss for writing all the books that she writes. I have liked every couple and every one of her books, but this one is specifically about two people who work in the publishing industry. Nora is an agent and Charlie is an editor. And so at the very start of the book, they have like a work lunch where they have a misunderstanding and they do not get along. And then after that, they just like don't really like each other. They're not really like enemies or rivals or anything, but they just like had a bad experience and they both don't really like each other. And so Nora ends up going on a trip to like this small town in North Carolina with her sister for like a sister trip. And then Charlie happens to be there. And so then through a series of events, cause the trip that they go on is pretty long, um, they end up spending a lot of time together and kind of falling in love. And I really liked their relationship because it's very adult. Like everything about their characters felt very fully realized. And I, what I really appreciate about Emily Henry is I feel like she used uses romance tropes really well um so this is kind of a dislike to love sort of vibe which is obviously very common in romance but what i liked about it is that she didn't like drag it out there was yearning and angst in this but she didn't drag it out in a way that was annoying and then also she didn't really rely on the miscommunication trope like i feel like everything that happened in this book felt very realistic and the way that they did deal with their issues like they're kind of like coming to terms like as adults like how they could make this relationship work and i don't know i really enjoyed it i also liked the sisterly bond in this book the one thing i will say though that made me literally want to murder someone is that um nora's sister calls her sissy 
the entire book like she's like sissy 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 and I wanted to punch her and she was a pregnant character so I couldn't punch her but because she's fictional I would want to punch her even though she's a pregnant one like it's, please don't say sissy like it, death penalty like why would you why would you write that into the book that is Emily Henry's one flaw actually the other flaw is that all the covers for all of her books are so ugly like I feel like this style of romance cover just does not like encapsulate what her books are about like shame on the romance industry for forcing her to have these ugly illustrator etsy girl boss slate like, covers like i just like fucking hate these covers um but other than that it was a five star read and i really liked it the next category i have is i wouldn't rush to recommend it as in these books weren't bad but there's nothing about them that are that special and i gave them all three stars and they were just fine like they were all fine and i just as I said, I would not rush to tell you to go out and read them. Number one on this list is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This is a book about a girl named Piper who is kind of an heiress. Like she's not really an heiress, but think like Paris Hilton. She's very affluent. She's living her life. She doesn't have a job because her stepdad is a very famous, I think he's a movie producer, director person. And so because of that, she's lived a very charmed life. And at the very beginning of the book, she gets arrested for something. And so as punishment, her stepdad sent her to this like seaside town in Oregon um, to kind of learn a lesson because her birth father actually owns a bar there um, and she didn't really know her dad that well because he passed away when she was really young because he was a crab fisherman it's like a whole thing you know think like the perfect storm but he died and so uh, basically her mom had gone off and went to LA and that's how the whole living with her stepdad thing happened anyway I'm not doing a good job of explaining this but anyway Piper has to go to this like seaside town and um prove to her stepdad that she's like responsible by like running this bar and so she meets a fisherman while she's there and they have a kind of rustic romance if you will um and it was really cute i really liked it um i don't love tessa bailey's writing style it is very childish to me like i don't know there's th this certain way that romance books are written sometimes that just irks me like why must the dialogue in all romance be a punishment i actually made a video recently called things i hate in romance books i will link that down below as well a lot of further watching for you guys that i'm talking about in this video um but I'm um, being referential, if you will. Uh, but basically, I just really want to understand why the dialogue in romance books sometimes feels like a war crime. Like, no one talks like that. Literally, no one talks like that. Also, all of Piper's outfits in this book were also a war crime. Like, she was wearing, like, sequined jumpsuits and just outfits I couldn't even picture in my brain because they sounded so ugly. Like, a lot of people accuse Emily Henry of writing very millennial books. You know what? I don't think she does. I think Tessa Bailey does in a way that even as a millennial makes me cringe. Um, and I didn't love the sex scenes in this either. I felt like they were kind of embarrassing for me, like secondhand embarrassment. Like they just didn't give me the same vibes as like what book lovers gave me. But overall, it was really cute. I really liked the characters, even though they were kind of like caricatures where um, the guy was like, oh, I'm a girl fisherman. And she's like, oh, I'm just this girly girl from LA. Like it kind of like leaned into those tropes. Um, but overall, it was really cute. I really liked it. And it did lead me into the next book, which is Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is the second book in this sort of companion series. So the first book's about Piper. The second one is about her sister, who I can't remember her name, even though I literally just finished this book a couple weeks ago. Hannah. Anyway, so the second book is about Hannah, who is Piper's sister, who Hannah had gone to the seaside town with her, um, basically like as like moral support. And um, the fisherman guy had a best friend who's like, in, like in his crew um cannot remember his name what's weird is i actually liked hannah and this guy more than piper and the other guy from the first book like so basically to explain it i liked the first book more as in like my enjoyment level but i liked the characters better and the romance better in the second one like i felt like it was sexier and cuter but like story wise i preferred the first book if that makes any sense overall they were both three stars but basically in hook line and sinker hannah and this guy um have a friendship because they became friends in the first book and then hannah went back to la and then they just texted each other throughout the year and became like really good friends but the guy is his name Fox? Anyway, this guy, possibly named Fox, has a history of kind of being a playboy and everyone in the town kind of refers to him as like, oh, the guy that like sleeps with a lot of women. He's kind of like a Casanova. And so he doesn't really like have a lot of self-worth. And so uh, basically through his friendship with Hannah, he realizes that he can have like a platonic and normal connection with a woman. I guess what I really didn't like about this book in comparison to the first one is that I felt like this guy, potentially named Fox, I can't remember, um, 
needed a lot of therapy because of him having this reputation of being a bad boy he kind of just like leaned into it and he had really like bad self-worth and like didn't think very highly of himself and so like hannah kind of has to like help him see that everything is fine and he's a good person but really i just felt like she was doing all the heavy lifting for him and really he should have spoken to a professional about it um like in the first book the guy had an issue because he was a widow and he felt a lot of guilt about like moving on from his ex-wife um but that like felt very minor in comparison to what we're dealing with in the second book and it kind of just felt like there was like a lot of parts where hannah would be like i have to be a good you know friend and lover to him so that he can see his self-worth and i was like mm, i don't think that should be your responsibility girly your back's gonna hurt after you carry all that weight of the relationship um so i don't know i just don't really like that about that so overall similar vibes on both of them were like very cute not mad that i read them but i wouldn't like be like you guys should read them they're such good romance they're just kind of like fine and then the last book in this category is called me maybe by cara bastoni cara bastion cara, i don't really know how to say her name uh, this is an audible original that i picked up randomly because i saw someone on goodreads review it it's like super random um it just kind of came across my radar and i decided to pick it up i think i read it in the vlog where i became a redhead so if you're interested in seeing that i'll link that down below as well just really wanting you guys to watch all my content but basically this is about a girl who is starting a business she's like an entrepreneur and she's trying to build her website with this like website builder and something breaks so she has to call customer support and this guy picks up and basically they spend like the entire day like literally like six to eight hours trying to fix her website because she's trying to launch it in time for an event um because you know she's gonna go to like this conference thing and he feels very like responsible for helping her fix it and so basically over the course of the day they talk forever and they really hit it off and they're like flirting and they both realize that they both live in new york city and they just keep realizing they've got stuff in common and so it's sort of about them like falling in love over the phone um and it was really cute it was really fine um i did like the audiobook because it is an audible original so they kind of put a lot of like special effects and things into it so like when they're on the phone it sounds like they're on their phone like there's like sound effects like overall like they put a lot into the production so that was really enjoyable um it's kind of a cutesy romance there's no smut in it and i did like the couple but they did meet over the course of a day so like i didn't necessarily like fall in love with them like together like their chemistry was like fine and it was cute so again i wouldn't rush to recommend it but it was cute and i gave it three stars the next category is interesting premise and this basically just means any book that i felt like was really unique like something about the premise made me go now that's a unique book first on this list we have confessions by kanae minato i did look up how to pronounce that i don't speak japanese but hopefully i said that well um, but it is a translated book obviously from japanese and it is about this woman whose daughter had died like in the previous school year and she's a teacher and so at the very start of the book she kind of sits her students down and she like gives them this very serious talk where she's like hey everyone thinks that my daughter's death was an accident but actually one of you in this classroom murdered her and so like it's sort of like her telling the whole class the story of like what actually happened to her daughter and then the rest of the book is kind of like the fallout of all the other characters like after they hear about this murder and it's super interesting like i just feel like the storytelling was unique and i really like just really enjoyed it like i really resonated with it i really liked it um and i loved the writing style i would love to read more from this author and i don't know it's always fun to read a thriller from another country because i feel like the vibes are just different the culture is different and overall like the just like everything about it was different it felt unique and i really liked it i felt like it was an interesting premise just how it like starts with the storytelling and then goes into all these different first perspectives and you kind of see the same story from like different views i just really liked it next up on this list we have pestilence by laura thalassa this is a book about a woman who falls in love with one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse obviously pestilence and so basically when we start out this book the four horsemen have come to earth and they sort of like ruined technology like ever since they've come like the internet doesn't work correctly and like life has just really changed and so they show up one day and then they just like disappear and everybody's like that's so weird they like science tries to explain it away they're like that's really bizarre and then only one of them kind of comes out of hiding and it's pestilence and so he's kind of like going across the world and killing everyone and so our main character her name's actually sarah um lives in canada and she is a firefighter and so she and her fellow firefighters draw straws to kind of decide like who's gonna go try to kill pestilence and so she unfortunately is the one that has to go do that so she kind of goes and tries to kill pestilence but because he's essentially a deity he is unable to be 
be killed and so he takes her as a prisoner and so for the rest of the book he is traveling around with her as he's killing people with sickness and slowly but surely they fall in love and it's a really bizarre concept because he is straight up like killing people but she's like but he's hot and so she kind of has to like decide if she cares about being with him more than she cares about humanity and i felt like there was a lot of moral things to think about while you're reading it and overall it was just like a very interesting premise and it is a four book series obviously because there's four horsemen and so the next book i believe is war so i am interested in reading that soon um, but overall i really liked it i think i gave it like four stars and it was a good time the last book i read in this category is the woman in the library by solari gentle i actually read this for my 24 hour reading vlog that i posted very recently i will link that down below Below if you're interested in watching it but basically this is like an inception -y thriller it's like a thriller within a thriller within a thriller it's kind of confusing to explain but we start the book with a letter from this man named leo who is an author and he's writing to a fellow author who has been recently published and is doing really well and he's sort of writing to her her name's hannah i think her name's hannah is it hannah Yes, I think it's Hannah. Anyway, he's writing to her and he's like, congratulations on your new book, blah, blah, blah. And we're sort of led to believe that they are kind of writing pals. Um, you know how authors have like friends that they like send their work to each other and whatever. Um, but basically they kind of like hit it off their writing. And so she starts sending him like parts of her book. So basically we alternate between reading his letters that are responding to the chapters that we're reading because then the book that we're reading is the book that the author is sending. And then the book is about a woman named Freddie, who is an author as well, who is in the Boston Library at the very beginning of the book, and she hears a scream, and she is really confused about what happened, and she ends up meeting these other characters who are also all confused about why there was a scream in the Boston Public Library, um, and basically, like, the security guards are like, oh, nothing happened, it's fine, but then later they end up finding a body, and so they're like, okay, clearly someone was murdered in the library, blah, 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 and so then, like, Freddie's writing a story about her experience in the Boston Library while Hannah is writing a story about it while Leo is writing letters about all the chapters that we're reading and kind of giving feedback on what he thinks about the book. I know that's kind of a mindfuck, but like I said, it's very inception -y. And so it was a really cool premise. Like I loved that it was like kind of like a book within a book within a book. Like I love that vibe. And so I really liked it. I liked where the story went. Something that's really fun and interesting about it as well is that as we go on through Leo's letters, he's kind of sketchy and you, you start like distrusting him more and more because the things that he's like calling out in Hannah's book are really weird and he's being like really like manipulative and controlling and kind of just like eerie and sketchy and so like you kind of almost like have like a thriller outside the thriller that's like happening in the story <laughs> if that makes any sense it goes really deep but overall I think my point is that it was really interesting I talked about it way more in that vlog like in depth if you want to watch that but I think I gave it like four stars I really liked it and I would definitely be interested in reading more from this author she is actually a Australian and so the main character in the book is Australian as well she's just living in Boston because she's like has like a writing scholarship or something um so I don't know I was curious it's interesting I liked it and you should read it if that sounds interesting to you the next category is books that I think would get you out of a reading slump. And for this, I have two thrillers by John Mars. The first one being The Passengers and the second one being The One. I read both of these for that 24 hour reading vlog. I just was kind of in the mood to read a bunch of thrillers. And so I read three thrillers in 24 hours. And so The Passengers is set in a futuristic timeline where cars are self-driving. And so at the very start of the book, we have this large cast of characters all getting in different self-driving cars for different reasons. And then a hacker kind of hacks into them and basically tells all of them that in about two hours they're probably going to die because he's kind of broadcasting this whole spectacle where he's like hacking into the cars and he's got cameras in the cars and kind of showing like what the different like drivers are doing or saying and whatever and they're all hiding different secrets and so it's like this whole conspiracy and so he is putting it on social media and asking people to vote for who they want to survive. The whole book basically reads like an episode of Black Mirror. It's very fast paced and I really enjoyed it a lot. Overall, I gave it four stars. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about it is that the ending started dragging. Like there were numerous times in the last bit of the book where I was like, are we not done yet? Like, why are we still talking about this? Um, but overall, I felt like it was just like a really good time. And I think that if you were in a reading slump that you could read this, I would also highly recommend the audiobook if you're into that. Um, because they do 
like kind of do it in a way that feels very like well acted like there's multiple actors because there's so many different perspectives as well as like whenever there's like a news anchor or like something like that being broadcasted they make it sound like it's on the news so it just was very engaging and i really really enjoyed it so after that i moved immediately on to the one by john mars and this is also kind of a sci-fi thriller where there is this DNA test that matches you up with your perfect match. So if you send in your DNA, kind of like 23andMe, um, you will get results back and they'll tell you who your soulmate is. And the only thing is that you can't really control like who it's gonna be. Like, let's say you're like a 24 year old sending it in, you could come back with like it saying that like an 80 year old is your soulmate. Or if you're like a man that's never been attracted to men, it might come back and say it's a man or so on and so forth. Like you might be married and then it says it's not your spouse. And so it's kind of like a gamble if sending in your DNA match is like worth it or not um, because it does lead to breaking up some relationships. And so what kind of makes it a thriller is that not everyone is happy with this DNA match thing. And we're following a couple of different characters who are going on this journey of figuring out who their match is. And so one of the characters is actually a serial killer. And so you get introduced with him right off the bat that he's a serial killer and he gets matched up with a police officer. So there's a little bit of like suspense with him being, you know, killing people and then her being like in, on the police force. Um, and then we have like another character who's like, goes off to Australia to try to find her match because he lives in a completely different country and um, then there's another woman who gets matched with someone and then finds out that he is no longer like available and so she has to like get close to his family and it's like a whole thing and so what I really liked about it is that some of the plot lines just kind of felt like cute little romantic stories and then some of them felt very like thrillery um, so it kind of gave me a little bit of everything and I really really enjoyed it I really want to read more from John Mars after reading these two books I think both of them kind of gave me the feeling that no exit gave me as in that they were like really fast-paced really interesting um, you do have to suspend belief a little bit but overall like I'm just like having a good time. So I think if you like to know Exit by Taylor Adams, you might like these. Um, they just gave me that same vibe, like they would get me out of a reading slump. And so I really would recommend them for that purpose. The next category I have is worst characters. Like just characters that I was like, why are you doing that? Why are you like that? Why are you who you are? Like it's uh, it's upsetting to me that you would even write a character like this. And for that, I have Verity by Colleen Hoover. I read this for the video where I read authors that I did not previously like. Um, I don't have a good track record with Colleen Hoover. I've only ever read one other book. I read November 9. And I also thought that book was really bad. Um, so this book was like a hard one star. Um, the characters in this were just god awful like just so bad and i understand they were not written to be like amazing people but they were written so grotesquely i was just like why simply why and it wasn't like oh they're dark morally gray characters in a fun way it was just like a i feel embarrassed for you because you were acting such a fool so in this book we have our main character she is a struggling author i literally don't remember her name all i know is that she's insufferable and she is having a hard time because her books are not selling very well so her publisher doesn't want to publish anything else um so at the very start of the book she gets tapped on the shoulder to help ghostwrite a series by this woman named verity like she has this very like highly like successful like i think it's like a crime like mystery thriller type series and uh, they want her to go in and finish writing it because verity has had a very bad accident and she is unable to write it herself like her health just isn't good enough for her to do it and so her husband jeremy i do remember his name also don't like him but jeremy approaches her and is like hey we'll pay you a bunch of money if you will finish writing my wife's books and you can be like the ghost writer or he also said that she could put her name on it if she wanted but she is really like modest and she's like i just want to be a ghost writer or whatever but basically jeremy's like hey why don't you come up to like i think it's like upstate new york or like vermont or something he's like come to our estate um and go in verity's office because that's where all her notes are and then you can kind of go over what she intended for the book because verity is basically comatose and she cannot write it herself like she's literally like you can't talk to her she's like a vegetable so he's like come and like read her notes like figure it out like i don't know what she was gonna write with it so like you kind of have to like piece it together and so the girl's like okay yeah i'll come stay with you whatever because you're paying me a lot of money like i'm gonna get the bag like get my coin so she goes and as she's there she starts realizing that things aren't quite what they seem like she sometimes feels like verity's not actually in a coma like she kind of seems like she's moving sometimes so that's like sketching her out and then in verity's office she finds this manuscript 
for like a biography like a self like an autobiography um where basically like she reveals that she's like a really bad person and so the book is kind of split up between the girl like writing the book and interacting with the husband and the family and also reading what verity wrote so you kind of get verity's perspective as well and the whole thing with this book is that a bunch of crazy shit happens and it's supposed to be like a thriller but overall it just gave me bad vibes because we've got verity who's in a coma right She's been in a car accident. She's not doing great. She can't write her books. And then her husband, Jeremy, and we're led to believe that Verity's not a very good person through her memoir that she wrote that like the girl found. Um, but then meanwhile, Jeremy and the author girl, I really can't remember her name, are like making googly eyes and kind of like getting closer and closer. And then they like basically fuck. Um, but the issue is that Verity's literally like in a coma upstairs. So like they're like having sex in the master bedroom while Verity's like literally a vegetable. And there's a bunch of like child deaths in this. Like a lot of children get like murdered in this book um, or like murdered or like die. I don't really know. I'm doing a bad job explaining this, but the whole point of it is that these characters were awful and I hated this book and I don't recommend it. One star, really did not like Verity. I'm so sorry for all of you people who love Colleen Hoover. I just, I literally don't get it. I literally don't get it. I'm just gonna stay away from Colleen Hoover because listen, she's got a lot of fans in this world who love her, adore her. Like she's probably like a millionaire by now, like with how much people buy her books. Um, and I'm just happy to sit this one out. Like it's kind of like The Push by Ashley Audrain. Actually, no, not really because The Push is actually well written. Like I actually can see intellectually why people like that book. I don't see why people like Verity unless you like kind of dramatic trauma porn. I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to get offensive because if you like it, you like it. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, have fun. I'm glad you like it. I'm not one of you. I'm not part of you. And I'm out. The next category is sort of a foil to that, and that is favorite characters. I actually already said this in my mid-year book freakout tag. I guess it's kind of repetitive to post these videos right, like, one after the other. But oh well. I'm talking about technically more books than this, so hopefully they're different enough content-wise. But I already said this before, but Anne is my favorite character. I love Anne. I love Anne of Green Gables. I actually read the fifth book this quarter, um, Anne's House of Dreams. This series has eight books in it. I feel like not many people know that. Before I got into this series, I did not know that. I thought Anne of Green Gables was like a standalone. It's not. There's eight books. So this is book number five. And this is what I read in the last three months. And so in this book, Anne is all grown up. She's 25. She gets married. She starts having kids. She moves to like this town and has her own like first little cottage like with her like newlywed vibe with her husband. And it's just so so adorable, so romantic, and I loved all the characters in this. But I guess we should back up in case you don't know what Anne of Green Gables is about. But essentially in the first book, we have Marilla and Matthew. They are brother and sister and they own a farm. They're both unmarried and they just like own a family farm. And they need someone to help them. So they decide they're going to adopt a little boy from an orphanage so he can come and help them work on the farm. But there's a mix up and they end up sending Anne instead. And so she is just this charming, darling 11 year old girl who shows up that's like extremely precocious and just overall a good time and they decide they're going to keep her even though that's not really what they intended and so that's how they end up with Anne and she's just so amazing I love her so much as a character I think what I like about Anne is she's just very optimistic she's very imaginative she's just beautiful I can't not say that part of why I dyed my hair red is because of her because I kind of feel like it is. I already wanted to be redhead, but then I read Anne of Green Gables and I was like extra like, mm, I should be a redhead. Um, but yeah, this was really good. It was not my favorite in the series. I gave this one four stars, um, but it still gave me like the cozy vibes that this whole series gives me. I just love Lucy Maud Montgomery. She is just an icon. Like everything about her books is ahead of her time. Like the way that she depicts women and talks about women's roles and just like them in relation to men is so interesting like what i really love is like Anne, for example ends up getting married wanting to have kids like she kind of wants to go the traditional route but there's like a long period of time in the books where she goes to college and she has a job and she's single and she's honestly not even really that interested in getting married like she has other friends that are getting married sooner than her like she literally gets married i think at age 25. the next category is books that i know are technically good but they're not for me like i rated them lowly because they're just not books for sarah First, we have All's Well by Mona Wad. I think overall, we can just agree that Mona Wad's not for me. I liked this more than Bunny, but I did not necessarily like this. It is about a woman who has chronic pain 
and nobody really believes her like just everyone thinks she's making it up she had an accident when she was younger she was an actress and she was doing a stage play and she fell off the stage and like hurt her hip and ended up getting surgery and the surgery was botched and ever since she just like had shooting pain like in her lower back and in her legs and everybody just thinks she's making shit up and from my understanding i don't have chronic pain but from what i've heard of other people this is a experience that a lot of people with chronic pain experience like specifically women um and so in the book she ends up meeting these like three men that are like kind of magical and they basically give her the power to give her pain to other people so that she doesn't have pain anymore and she's a theater director and they're putting on a performance of all's well and so there's like this whole thing about like all's well and like Macbeth and it's kind of giving like Macbeth with the witches vibes and it's like there's consequences to her getting these powers it's it's a bit confusing I will say the story is more straightforward in my opinion than Bunny was but it's still weird and it's just not for me. I think I can tell that Mona Watt is talented. Like her writing is good, I guess, if you're into that. Um, I think I gave this like two or three stars, but overall it's just not for me. Like I'm giving up on Mona Watt. Like I read this for that video where I read authors that I don't like. And I just think I can accept that Miss Mona is not for me. She's for one of you. Like if you like Bunny, you like All's Well, you like whatever Mona Watt's coming out with, happy. You can, you go buy her book because I won't be doing it. The next book is actually a novella and I would definitely say that I can intellectually say that this is good but just emotionally, spiritually, experientially, experientially, experience, my experience, I don't know what the word is that I'm trying to use there uh, but anyway my experience is that I didn't like it but I can acknowledge that I can see why other people like it and that is True Crime by Samantha Kolznick. I just really didn't like this. It is a novella. It's really short so it's hard to talk about the plot without ruining things but all you really need to know is it's about a girl who kills her mother like when she's younger and so her brother um, in an attempt to kind of like cover it up happening like he sets a house on fire and then they kind of travel across the country and kind of like experience like being on the run and then like years later um, it's like her kind of knowing what happened and having this like experience with her brother i don't really know how to explain it but it's really dark and the writing is very gritty um but it was like too gritty for me like i can see why someone would like it it's very fucked up and i do like fucked up things sometimes but i think for me i just didn't enjoy it like i it was kind of gross but not in a bad way like not in a way where i'm like ew that's gross like why would you like that like that's not how i felt about it i feel that way about like verity no offense if you like it but like this book i didn't feel that way like it was honestly more fucked up than Verity, but it was written in kind of like a poetic way. Um, and I, in general, don't love novellas. So maybe if it had been a longer novel, I would have liked it. But I kind of doubt that, actually. Because I didn't like this bite-sized amount of dark kind of fucked upness, I really feel like I wouldn't like it longer. And I just really hated the ending. The ending was bad. I don't know. I didn't like it. Overall, just didn't like it. I can respect it. I can say that this author is talented and I can see why other people like this and there's a reason why I picked it up because everyone who described it made me think I would like it but it's just not really for me. I would be curious to read something else by this author but I'm also kind of feeling like I probably would end up not liking it again. There's just something about the way she writes the grit that just doesn't connect with me and makes me feel kind of icky while I'm reading it. But again, I get it. I get why the other girlies like it. I just don't like it. Our last category is forgettable books. Like books that like when I was making this list, I truly forgot that I had read them, but I like saw it on my Excel spreadsheet and I was like, oh yeah, I did read those, but they did not stick with me. The first of these is The High Mountain Court by A.K. Mulford. This is a book that I found on TikTok, like the author actually has a TikTok and I really liked her personality and I thought the book sounded interesting so I went ahead and got it on Audible and it is basically like fey, high mountain courty. kind of feels like A Court of Thrones and Roses a little bit, um, but basically we have this girl who is a red witch, which is like a really rare witch that she has to like hide and so at the very beginning she's approached by like a fey prince who's like, you have to help me like find this ring so I can like defeat this guy that like took over the high mountain court and it's like this whole thing and it was fine it was fine I liked it when I was reading it but then it kind of dragged and I didn't like love it towards the end like I think I gave it like three stars and I genuinely like truly forgot that I read it and it's a series and I probably will not continue the series because it was kind of boring but if you're looking for something that kind of feels like A Court of Thrones and Roses um, you could read this. I feel like it doesn't compare. I mean, I don't even really like A Court of Thorns or I guess I like this more than A Court of Thorns and Roses, but overall, like, it didn't make an impact on me. But if it sounds like it would be your jam, you should read it. But for me, I didn't love it. Something that I really hated about the audiobook is that the narrator gave all of the, like, the characters, like, really weird 
accents like there was just literally no reason why she had to give them the accents she did like at no point in the book does it say that they're from a certain area or region because it's like a fantasy book she could have just spoken in her normal voice but she gave them like the most bizarre accents and i did not like that um but that wasn't like really why i didn't like it i think i'll just overall it was just kind of blah it was just kind of boring next up we have the paris apartment by lucy foley this is a british thriller about a girl who goes to paris to visit her brother but when she shows up at his apartment he is not there hence why it's called the paris apartment and so she kind of moves into the building and tries to find out what is going on and there's like all these wealthy people living in this building and it's like a whole thing and there's like a whole mystery to be had and overall it was boring. I read this again for like reading books by authors that I had previously not liked. Like I didn't really love, um, I forget what it's called. I think it's called The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I didn't really like that book. Um, so I was like, all right, let me give The Paris Apartment a try. And it was fine. It was literally fine. Like I think I give it like three stars. It kind of reminded me of like Ruth Ware. So if you like Ruth Ware, you might like this. I don't personally like Ruth Ware, so. I just didn't love it. I didn't love it. It was very forgettable. Like truly forgot I read it until I was making this list. And I was like, oh, I guess I should talk about that. But I literally forgot about it. And then the last book in this category and overall for this video is one that I feel like might disappoint people. And that is Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. I, Cosimano, Cosimano. I don't know how to pronounce anyone's names. Anyway, I didn't love this. It was fine. Like, it literally was fine. Like, every single book in this category got, like, three stars. Like, they were fine. They just were so forgettable to me. Like, I really expected to love this book because everyone is, like, eating it up. Like, it's a cozy mystery that everybody's, like, loving. Basically, Finley Donovan is an author, and her books are not performing well. And so, at the very beginning of the book, she's kind of meeting up with her editor to, like, talk about things and, you know, kind of talk about how she, like, hasn't written another draft of her next book. And she's struggling, and she's also going through a divorce because her husband cheated on her. And so, they're in a Panera Bread talking about her book. She's, like, a like mystery like thriller writer and they're talking about like murder and stuff because like in her book but someone overhears them and thinks that she is a like a hit for hire sort of thing and so they basically ask her if she can like kill their husband and so then she gets embroiled in this like huge like kind of conspiracy because of you know the murder of this guy and her being like paid to kill him um and so yeah it's kind of a fun concept i liked it a lot for the concept and while i was reading it i thought that i would probably want to keep reading the series and like read the next book in the series but in reality after i put this book down i genuinely forgot about it like to the point where i know i finished it but i actually can't remember what happened no i can't actually I, my brain goes back and forth on remembering what happens like in the last few scenes of this book like i just now remembered like as i was saying i didn't but like if you'd asked me a week ago what happened at the end of that book i'd be like i don't know like it just was really forgettable to me and i didn't love the writing style and honestly i actually have read books by this author before like back in my heyday i think she wrote a ya book called like nearly gone or something um and i remember reading that and liking that like in my ya era um but i don't know i just it didn't didn't do it for me the only thing i can say is that this book i will credit to me rewatching charmed because there's a cop character in this book and the cop um reminded me a lot of andy from season one of charmed so i decided to rewatch charmed now i'm on season four so i love that for me but overall i didn't like this i think a huge thing that brought this book down for me is i understand that the point of a cozy mystery is that you're not really like supposed to care that much about the mystery and the thriller portions but i still care about those things i guess i don't know if co maybe cozy mysteries just aren't for me but i don't know the mystery just wasn't gripping to me and then on top of that i hated the romance in it like there's two different guys that are kind of vying for finley's like attention and i just didn't care about it, literally either of them like them being interested in her like didn't make any sense to me like it it honestly felt like it took away from the story like it ruined the vibes like i was like can we just actually have no romance in this i don't know I didn't like it. I will say if they were to like adapt it into a movie or a TV show, I probably would like it more, but I probably won't continue in the series and it was just forgettable to me. I like, after we talk about it today on this video, I probably will never talk about Finley Donovan ever again. Like that's how much is forgettable to me. But that brings us to the end of this list. I think there were about 18 books in this list. So I'm hoping that I read more next quarter. I feel like I wanted to read like at least five more books than I did, um, but it's fine, it's fine. I think I've read like 45 books this year, so we're still doing well. We're just not doing as well as I wanna be. But we'll get back on track. 
So that's it for this video. Let me know down below how you liked this format. Should I try something different next time? Is there something that you can think of or should I go back to the genre style? Like, let's just spice it up. Tell me, tell me what you wanna see. And if there are any books that you've been reading lately that you think I'd really enjoy, please let me know down below. I would love to read anything that you think would fit my fancy based on what you know about me. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day.